Hello and welcome to episode 93 of Pixel Sift. If you're joining us for the first time, uh, we're a podcast, a West Australian podcast. In fact, Perth locals, you might even go as far to endorse us as. Um, that brings you the best of the Australasian gaming scene uh, featuring developers from around our area. But we also talk about the uh, the topics that are making the news and stuff that uh, we have been seeing around. I'm joined by my co-hosts this week, uh, Sarah and Scott. Thank you for coming coming on the show. Hey. Not a problem. I'm glad I'm glad you here. Thank you for having me back again. Uh, we're also going to be joined by Lachlan Juzva. He is the creative lead at uh, Rect Angle Studios, which is probably one of the best names uh, mm. for a game development company that I've heard recently. Uh, and he's just released a new game called Nova Flow. Lachlan, thank you for joining us. That is... Uh, no worries. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Lachlan, <laughs> last time we spoke to you was at PAX Australia in 2017, and we're looking forward to learning about uh, what's changed with your game, which was at that time called Chromalocity, mm. um, which was very difficult to spell, um, but you've gone for, for Nova Flow now, which is which is great. Uh, Scott, what else are we checking out today? Uh, yes, yes. If you've been paying attention to any gaming media over the last week or so, you may have noticed a lot of attention around the idea of unionisation of the games industry. Uh, the idea that developers and other workers in the games industry are getting a rough deal is nothing new. The idea of crunch or burnout is an unfortunate norm in the games industry, and we've definitely covered that um, a few times ourselves. That all might be a thing of the past, though, as the industry moves towards at least begins the conversation of unionisation. And that's, uh, that's the topic for today. And uh, we'll also be bringing you the winners of our Mole Men Must Die competition that's coming up. But shall we jump in, Scott? Shall Please. we jump in, Let's Sarah? Pixel Sim! It's not Pixel Siv. It's Pixel Sift. Pixel Sim! So, as I said, um, games industry, unionization. Um, we've been Two topics that I've heard of before. I know, I know. Um, so we have brought this up before, uh, the idea of crunch and burning out. And it seems to be a bit of a norm, as I said, in the games industry, a bit of an unfortunate norm. Uh, but recently, in the last week or so, the industry has come together and started discuss discussions towards rectifying um, all the negative kind of sides of it. And um, one of those uh, prominent ideas is the idea of unionization. What's a union, Scott? Uh, basically, it's just a collective that represents a specific body and they kind of uh, have their interests, uh, the workers' interests over the uh, the company's interests, basically, making sure the company's considering the people's interests and not exploiting them. Very well said. What's yeah, a sorry, video I wasn't ready for that uh, <laughs> you did it, you did it. summary. Now, what's a video game, Scott? Okay. <laughs> I mean, if you don't know, you're probably in the wrong place. Um, so, yeah, it's been a... You didn't answer the question, Scott. Uh, do you did. know what a video game is? <laughs> Maybe I this, don't. He's been doing this for two years and he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Too much pressure. Been hiding it all. Um, so, Fogging up over here. Yeah, the Game Developers uh, GDC, J a Game Developers Conference, was held uh, sort of this month, uh, uh, around the 19th week. to 23rd, of, yeah. um, with events sort of bracketing either side of it. And one of the big mm. discussions was obviously unions um, and that... Uh, game developers who are working for these big companies should have something to, uh, you know, work together and kind of say that, you know, we do want to have a set of conditions that are, uh, you know, beneficial for us to work in and that we're not going to be burning ourselves out. And, you know, there is always, there's these famous uh, terms that people talk about, like, you know, there's these game development, uh, you know, widows, basically. They talk about, you know, your family life breaks down because you're in, when you're in crunch for one of these big studios, you just aren't around at all so your relationships fall apart yeah and so. like that for a serious industry is really just not good enough f the, you know there's no um you can't sustain that kind of mm. uh you know, workload yeah or lifestyle yeah yeah you know? lachlan you're a game well, developer what do you think about uh the unionization of the the game development industry i mean it's definitely a step in the right direction because <laughs> what we have now clearly isn't Mm. working even as a student dev like the, <laughs> the hours you have to put in are absolutely ridiculous and like you're not earning any money at the time either so it's it's, it's like a double blow it's really it's really really difficult 
Well, that's, that's yeah. it's not even just for the smaller studios like yourself. I mean, even the bigger kind of um, employers will have s- ways to exploit younger people, you know, through internships and through just n- never paying people what they're worth. And I think that's a bit of an issue. Um, I've got a cool little s- from the roundtable that happened at uh, GDC last week, uh, which was led by the International Games Development Association's Jen McLean. Um, there's an interesting quote that you liked, Gianni, from Steve mm. Kaplan, who's the union organiser for the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees. He basically said, if you're not at the table, you're essentially on the menu. Right. And I think that's uh, that's uh, resonates, I think, a lot with the, the industry as a whole. Yeah. It's interesting because the uh, obviously the IGDA uh, that Jen McLean is, is, is part of yes. has uh, representatives from the big companies, um, but also represents uh, game developers at all levels. And, and, is, and uh, you know, they actually are, I guess, the key lobby group, uh, if you think about it in the US sort of sense, that try to push the, uh, the, the value of games as an in- industry and one that makes money and stuff like that. So and they're also the ones that are doing servo surveys amongst the community and, and yeah. creating stats. Like I remember with the um, the SAG after a strike from 2016, sorry, um, IGDA had a 2015 uh, satisfaction survey with 62% of game developers at that stage indicating their jobs involved crunch and that cunt crunch is still a problem. So I think, like I said, this has been a long time coming. Mm. One of the things that kind of came out of this roundtable was that the IGDA's position was kind of, it, it seemed like they were, we're not super on board with the idea of developers um, forming a union or a guild like SAG-AFTRA, which is like a creative group guild. So that's one of the, the, the things they were talking about. So, um, and, and sort of kind of the, one of the quotes that was pulled out was, you know, to assume that if you suddenly unionize, everything will be great. Um, but I don't think that's a, a reasonable assumption. It's so. pretty uh, interesting if you read uh, or if you start listening to it. There's a pr- pretty g- a couple of good conversations online. But um, Jen McLean, again, of IGDA, um, she came, seems to come across, if you don't listen to it long enough, as then she's almost opposed to unionization. She's all for the discussion, but she came, seems to be that other side of it. Yeah. They're, they're not anti-union, but just the saying- The devil's advocate, I guess. Basically, and it's yeah. really good that she does that because she she makes really interesting points. And, and just like you said, you know, unionization is not going to fix all of these problems and especially not going to do it overnight. Um, but what is happening now is a great conversation that's going to move towards um, developers and people in the gaming community being looked after how they should be. Lachlan, did Bouncing you- off of that, I yeah, found- sorry. Oh, sorry. Go, Sarah. Please. I found an interesting article that talked about- um, It's basically just saying it's a terrible idea, but it doesn't actually talk about why the writer thinks it's a terrible idea. It's from a Canadian website. And obviously, we know that the Canadian AAA industry is, is doing really well. They have a, a lot of fantastic studios there. But they do mention that there's already a solution to unionization, which is just people making their own companies. Now, what I found really interesting in this article is they used the example of The Long Dark, which was um, formed by a bunch of industry veterans. Now, the key words there were industry veterans. These are people that work for AAA titles, uh, companies such as Ubisoft, Mon- Ubisoft Montreal, Bioware, Relic Entertainment. So, these are people that have a stack of experience and probably some funds to already live their lives on that were already relatively successful in their previous you know, games and they would have had a lot of successful experience. And this article is basically saying, you know, studios like this are, are great. This is the way forward is forming your own small studios and working remotely and this is the solution. But that doesn't really slide for indie or student devs, you know, and, and I mean, I'd be interested to hear, you know, your opinion, Lachlan, on this, because I I feel like this article completely throws those people under the bus because it doesn't really mention them at all. It just talks about, you know, this one studio that's vastly successful, but I feel that's because they were, it was funded, founded by AAA devs originally. I mean, yeah, 100%. With, <laughs> with no money, you have to crunch you know the work ethic is you go until you drop because what else is there without funding without anything uh, it's not going to go anywhere does so do you also find that if uh, you know if you're offered a position at a at a studio or something like that you'd be more inclined to take it because you know you, you've just come out of uni and you haven't got a lot of options around mm. i mean absolutely like it if i had that opportunity i would be jumping for absolute joy because you have a chance to do what you want to do and get paid for it. Like currently I'm doing a day, I'm at a day job and, 
I am not getting paid enough at all. Like it, it, it's it's <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I've just lost my train of thought. <laughs> That's fair enough. Well, look, um, one of the big sort of organisations that kind of came out of GDC that were sort of handing out the sort of fake Nintendo Power magazines uh, was a group called Game Workers Unite, um, and they're kind of pushing for. Uh, sort of a, a standard so that, you know, you you don't just have to jump at any opportunity. You can say, all right, well, look, if I'm going to take a placement with company A, I know that I'm going to get, you know, paid or I'm going to get X number of hours or it's going to mean that they, they train me in something or, or whatever. Um, and uh, Mohini Dutta uh, was one of the organisers of this group and they said it's because game, um, development isn't an easy thing to predict, the bosses ask for unrealistic timelines about how people have to work, sometimes up to or more than 60 hours a week and that's really unhealthy healthy um, they're being compensated by giving a large bonus but it leads to a lot of work and burnout in games especially this, this kind of unsustainable work-life balance isn't taken seriously enough as something that, to push back against for for the workers so yeah very very interesting sort of uh, discussion that they're having I think it's interesting um, that it's taken kind of this long for anything a movement like this to happen within the games industry um, it's, it's not like they are new you know we, they've been making video games for a very long time yeah um, and there's heaps of reasons that have been given, you know, like um, the game industry emerged from the general IT sector, you know, where unions and collectives aren't, I guess, as prevalent as, say, in your labour type industries. Um, and also, no, I lost my thought. Yeah, yeah, I think it's interesting. It's a, it's a, it's more of a white collar sort of job versus a blue collar job, which we would recognise, you know, like your builders and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, because yeah, a dodgy yeah. builder, for example, can injure a worker and then they're disabled for life. So, mm. you know, and being a part of that is a really important thing for, for a union. But, you know, if you work some long hours, um, people don't see it as, as so much of an injury. But, you know, there is real sort of consequences to that. Um, and I think we, we were talking about this a little bit earlier today and we were saying that, you know, the games industry, yes, it's about sort of 30 to 40 years old now, you know, sort of started mm. in, in the 70s or so. Um, but it's now kind of reaching that point where people are starting to go, well, look, you know. It's maturing. Yeah, we, we need that sort of flexibility. We want to have um, the ability to see our family. Yeah. And we understand that it's hard and you have to work really. Um, and to earn a salary, a decent salary and not have to m pick up your life and move it all the time. Yeah. And like, look, like I said, this isn't, this isn't going to fix all the problems and it might not happen for a little while. Although the Gamer Workers Unite do think that they will see at least one company um, unionize in the next few months, although that might be too, a bit too optimistic. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, with all the naysayers and whatever, th th I, th I feel like this is going to happen. Uh, the logistics of it, who knows, you know, whether it's going to be a, an industry-wide union or a uh, developer to studio to studio uh, union or something like that. But I feel like this is good steps in a fantastic direction. Yeah, and I think we will see something similar to the yeah creative guilds that they have in the US, like SAG after the one that does represent the voice actors. Hopefully, who, we don't have a big strike like. Uh, sometimes you need to have a strike. True. You know? I mean, that's true. that's the power of the strike. You know? So, um, interestingly, in Australia, you know, we have uh, the MEAA, which um, does cover uh, creative uh, artists and people who make stuff. Um, whether or not their purview kind of extends out to to games, or whether it would be like the Australian. Uh, IT workers or the United Voice or something that would yeah. cover it. There is some sort of more generic unions that there could be, but you do kind of need people who know what they're talking about in terms of games. So they're not going, oh, 60 hours or whatever, um, like, and not realizing the, the nuts and bolts of actually making a game. So having these specialized ones uh, could be very interesting. I think it's um, it's a, it's probably a pretty, a bit of a heavy topic. It's probably not the most, uh, you know, exciting uh, one to be chatting about. <laughs> We're not talking about loot boxes or something this week, but, you know, no, but it, it's it is important something that for the is, future of the, of the industry. Yeah, I mean, if we want to keep enjoying our games, then we need to understand that the workers within it need the rights of every other worker in the world out there. Yeah, and all you're well, doing is just yeah. evening it out. So if there's a bad actor, you're not in a in a bad position. So That's it. there we go. All right, shall we jump into our next topic? Let's do it. Visit us on pixelsift.com.au. If you're just joining us, uh, we are. Joined this week by Lachlan from Rectangle Studios. Lachlan, we met you at PAX and you were spruiking your game, Chromalocity. Um, it's now called Novaflow, um, but if people haven't had a chance to see it, what is the game like and, and how does it play? So, Novaflow, uh, first person action platformer. You use your powers blue, red, and yellow. 
Uh, blue makes you go fast, red makes you bounce, yellow makes you stick to walls. Basically, it's a mesh between Portal 2 liquid physics and Mirror's Edge, and that's it. Super, super simple, super easy to pick up and play, and it's, it's just it's super great. Where did the idea come from? I, you know, you mentioned those two games there, but how did it all come about? So we were originally a, a Swinburne uh, student team, and basically it was just the brainstorming at the start and the desire to make a game that will look good at PAX. Because there were some, there were some ideas, like they, <laughs> there were some really, really terrible ideas, like. Uh, a teddy bear horror game that was all from the isometric point of view where you threw stuffing at monsters. That was mm, not going to happen. I take, but, it, um, take it that wasn't your idea. You yeah, pitched right. that one in. No, 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 no. That was not mine. No, <laughs> and basically uh, we had one good idea of matching colors to make you know those colors do things and we're just like, ooh, ooh, this could work. And uh, we went from there. So it did. So how did you guys go from? Oh, sorry. Go, Sarah. Go. How did you guys go from let's match colors to make you know to make things happen to the final game and and you know the kind of the mirror's edge portal to liquid physics mashup? So I'm not going to lie. That is a lot of me, because uh, some others at the beginning were like, let's basically make portal, <laughs> and I'm like. Uh, I'm not sure we can pull that off, to be honest. And really, I thought the only way we were going to get this to happen was to take it in a completely new direction, ramp everything up to be a sort of just reflex-based, intense gameplay that will show at PAX really, really well, get people playing, and uh, sort of from the get-go, it was that's where I wanted it to go, and I think it, I think it came off. Now, you've been at PAX for the last two years with, uh, well, Novaflow now, yes? Um, yes. So, what changed between not only the two PAXs, <laughs> but then to now as well? Now that the game's actually out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's out now. A couple of weeks. Yes. Sorry, I'll I let mean, you answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good. I mean, neither time at PAX was the game called Chrome. I mean, Novaflow, that's that's something. Yeah. Obvious. But... Um, so the first time we were a student team, second time we were out on our own. And now with like just a couple more months development, we've completely added an entire environment that was never shown, several dozen levels. Just in the last couple months of development, everything just came together really, really well. That's great. We do hear that a lot, you know, mm -hmm. much with all work, I guess, you know, it, it really does come together at the end. Um, but it, it's amazing, I guess, from our side of things, you know, because we saw it at PAX and it seemed so together and smooth and working. Um, and it always amazes me that the developer will say, you know, it all came together in the last month or whatever and we haven't seen it. it like, this is that crunch we've been talking about, Yeah, Scott. exactly. <laughs> exactly. It seems oh, done on the outside, but it's so far from. Uh, now, now, Lachlan, yeah. you kind of... Uh, you know, built it from a sort of student team game. Um, what's it like kind of carrying on a as a student team and, and as, as people need to go get jobs and other bits and pieces? How do you kind of work together as a group and, and make that all happen? That's a good question. I'd like to know that myself, <laughs> to me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it really just comes down to having a great team dynamic because, like, the uh, the main, what is it? three, four of us had worked together on a title just before, in the year before. And so we knew we worked together really well. And basically, we didn't want to let that go. So, so we I was about uh, to, I was, decided to make it a release. <laughs> I was about to ask, how big is the team? Was that originally a three, four person team? So, and still is? Or? And they all seem to be the people that we've come across are very encouraging of you, Lachlan. They're all uh, poised and ready for you to stuff up. So <laughs> go ahead and stuff up their names if you <laughs> feel like it. it. <laughs> so uh, the uh, very original ones were me, Wig, uh, Muir, Lachlan Muir, and... Then in the next year, on working on Chromelocity, we had oh god, here we go. So those those guys, Travis, Matt, Ty, 
Josh, Billy, and Drew. I think that's it. I think that's it. It's so there was nine of us. Big team. So it was bloody huge. Mm. Like, and that that came together not only from the start but throughout the year as well because other student teams actually dissolved during that year because of health issues that came from crunch. Oh, wow. Which is very just topical. A funny, funny, yeah, segue into exactly what we were talking about already. <laughs> Now, the game uh, is uh, obviously really well geared towards speed running it through. And in fact, that's like the main uh, sort of aspect of it. Uh, I did want to just uh, register a slight complaint because I'm a bit of a controller player. Um, and uh, it is much harder to play with a controller than it is to play with a uh, keyboard and mouse. But I just want to know oh, yeah. sort of a little bit about the designing of it. And, uh, you know, wh- what do you have to consider when you're actually making that and designing different control schemes? I mean, yeah, we were stuck on control schemes for a very, very long time. Like, uh, initially, what we had was uh, we were matching the colors to the buttons on an Xbox controller, which you think, yeah, that's fairly obvious. That's a, that's a great idea. But obviously, you select the color, then you have to fire the color, and you have to do that every single time for each platform. And oh my god, you're not going to... It was bloody intense. Let me tell you. But, um, oh, sorry. I've just lost myself again. We've got, um, that's all right. We've got, uh, you know, <laughs> we've got some of your friends on the chat. Wiggy987 <laughs> says PC Master Race. That's, well, that's, that's, that's why. That's an well, answer. That, well, to be fair, I was actually playing it on my PC with a controller, you know, just doing due <laughs> oh, diligence yeah, okay. on that. So yeah. I wanted to make sure that it, it worked yeah. with both. Um, so to, oh, to Wiggy, I say, sort it out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Gianni, and I like to insult indie devs while they're on the podcast. <laughs> and all their friends. <laughs> what are they going to do? Group up and, uh, you know, organize better conditions for themselves? <laughs> what are they going to do? Unionize against us? Exactly. <laughs> Uh, now, Lachlan, the, the game uh, is extremely fun and uh, we've, I've been sort of blasting through it and, and enjoying it there. Uh, you mentioned that you had like multiple different colors and stuff. Um, how, when you're kind of building these things, how much did you need to pair it back? Um, and how much do you say, okay, well, it does actually need some more um, based on, on feedback you have or, or maybe taking it to PAX? Yeah, that's super hard. Like, we were, it was very ambitious at the start and even still is absolutely crazy. But um, uh, it was, it's it's all just about cutting down to the core the entire time, sticking to the core vision. Because the the more you add, the more issues you're going to have. And so we we put in one mechanic. We'd make it work, make sure that it works, make sure it really, really, really works, and then we might move on to the next stage and add something else. Like it's it's just about just constant constant polish. Something I am interested in: the name change. I mean, I'm sure there's a valid reason behind it. Sounds like it's changed oh, a couple of times too. Yeah. Do tell. Ooh, Pray tell. Oh, yeah. So, funny story about the studio name. That was the original name for the game. Ho, ho. Wow. Terrible name. A Terrible lot. name for a game. Uh, great name for a studio, <laughs> though. Well played. Way to repurpose. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then we were stuck creating Chromolocity for months. And we were like, oh, my God, this is it. This is the best name ever. Chroma and Velocity. That's amazing. And then basically, as soon as we took it to the public, no one could pronounce it. People could barely say it. It's a mouthful. It was uh, a mouthful. Yeah. So. uh, And no one could spell it. We went back to the. (laughs) Oh, yeah. No, it's awful to spell. Carol Malate, Wiggy reckons. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Even our tutors at university would. Chromal City. Chrome, chrome nah. damn it! Like they've been, they've been with us for months and they couldn't say it. So uh, it was sort of a no-brainer, but it, <laughs> yeah, it took a while to uh, come up with something that would fit. <laughs> I think that's about it. it look, looks good on <laughs> the box. Remember. Yeah, it looks good on the box. It's easy to it say. Does. People don't get confused. Pick one. They're all great. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So the game's been out for two you know, weeks to the two day. Two weeks. Um, 
how, how are you feeling now at this point now that you've actually released it and it's out into the world? Ah, uh, seriously relieved because I can play other games. <laughs> like, oh my god, I'm smashing Monster Hunter right now. It's <laughs> so good. But um, as for the actual game, I, I I feel like it's being received really well. Like the people that have played it are having a great time. But now it's just the process of getting you know more people to play it, and that's the sort of the hardest bit to be honest. Mm-hmm. Generating an audience. Yes. And what's the what's the plan for that? How are you going to be generating the audience? I know you've you've come on you know Western Australia's premier video game podcast, which is a good out- step in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did actually get some Film Victoria uh, funding, and that has been absolutely brilliant because that meant we could get a professionally made trailer, for instance. We could get consulting, and rada, rada, rada. But even still, knowing what to spend that money on is bloody difficult, mm. to be real. Mm. And, uh, yeah, we're still learning the ropes, and marketing is completely new to all of us, so... <laughs> Just got to sort of see how that goes. Um, so, I mean, now that you're done with Novaflow, I'm sure you might have to jump into it to fix a bug or two at some point. But uh, re- forgetting about that, uh, what's on the plan for uh, Rectangle Studios as of now? I mean, uh, around about a month off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some much needed holiday um, time. Yeah, exactly. But... Um, after that's out, we're going to come together. We're going to see uh, how keen we are to move on to another project. i got to tell you, I'm keen because cool. I want to keep making stuff. I want to move on from Nova Flow. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, just uh, taking it as it comes at the moment. Does it feel good to you know have a, a project completely squared away now? It's cathartic. It, it's brilliant because just... You put that on your resume and it's like, look, you can go buy this on Steam. That's the biggest it's a real thing. PC thing. It's oh it's amazing. Like uh, so legit. And they go to you, Sir, this is that. a uh, you know, interview for Woolworths. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> Just didn't be able to pack a bag. <laughs> yeah, but you see you see, I made this with the team. See, I'm ma- a team player. I can make Just, a bag it works. in real <laughs> all these skills are interchangeable. <laughs> exactly. It's all these different colored items. Want to confirm? Can... You, you can buy it on Steam. I may have just purchased it on Steam. <laughs> as, we, as we were talking. <laughs> Maybe. There we Five go. purchases. Now, See, play, oh, coming on Pixel yeah. Sift is already paying off. There Literally. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Lachlan, uh, you know, if people want to find out a bit more about the game, where should they go if they want to give it a go? If they want to get onto Steam and, and, and purchase it, where, where should they start first? <laughs> I mean, you're probably better off just buying it on Steam, Novaflow on Steam. But um, Twitter is where we're most active. So we're Rectangle Stew, Twitter. And then basically from there, you can f- see our uh, press kit, our Facebook uh, website or everything. But um, Twitter is definitely the place to get us. <laughs> And we'll be sticking links up to that onto our website as well, where you can find out, uh, you know, trailers and you can watch a copy of this video as well if you'd like to see that one. Um, Lachlan, it's been really great. We've enjoyed uh, playing uh, your game over the last couple of days and mm-hmm. we enjoyed playing at PAX. It was really fun to, to give it a crack. Um, and I remember when we went to go see it at PAX, we were just sitting there try- yeah. failing terribly and you had one of your mates there who was actually just smashing at it and like... We were just like, what the? This guy looks like he just walked up and is like destroying the game. And you're like, nah, it's, it's one of our mates. He's been here all weekend. Been, <laughs> has, hasn't left. He's trying to make it look busy. No, he really has. It, it was, though. <laughs> um, so you can pick that up. Uh, uh, we've That's uh, pretty much all we've got time for mm. tonight. So, Lachlan, thank you very much for joining us. We hope that your uh, your dinner was good. Uh, <laughs> That you've oh, uh, so sweet of lucky had a sweet of lucky before the oh. show. This is a peer back behind the curtain. Yeah, uh, this is the things we talk about just before the show goes <laughs> Break live. Break down so that wall. There we go. Uh, you can find I mean, all the links not to. Not much talking. Yeah, you can find all the links to uh, Novaflow and Rectangle on Twitter and Lachlan as well. Uh, I don't know. Did he do an all right job? He was said that he was going to stuff up quite a bit. Are we can, <laughs> interested to hear what you have to say. I'm um, interesting to hear what the twice. chat has to say. Yeah, uh, whether or not he pulled that off or not. You've got a few minutes. Wiggy is a hard. Harsh critic. No, not uh, <laughs> taking taking you down. Um, 
our website, yeah, if you want to find the links, is pixelsift.com.au. Now, Scott. Yes. If people want to find our website by going through a social media network and they haven't deleted them all by mm. now, um, where should they go to? Uh, you can go to facebook.com forward slash pixelsift, twitter.com forward slash pixelsift, twitch.tv forward slash pixelsift, and youtube.com forward slash pixelsift au. And Sarah, if people want to go watch or, or listen to our other episodes, where should they go to? You can go to our website to stream all episodes. You can subscribe as a podcast on either iTunes or Pocket Cast or using the RSS link on our page. And if you're listening to us exclusively on one of these platforms, I just want to remind you that next time we go live, we go live every fortnight, but next time our next episode will be, will be on the 13th of April. Hey, we have an announcement. We do have an announcement. Well, before we rush off. We've got some winners for our competition. Uh, Mokomoto, yes. uh, very kind donated us some keys to give away in uh, a, uh, the game that we played last week, which is called Mole, Mole Men Must, must Die. die. Yep. Um, very fun game. Uh, and the winners of our competition, thank you everyone who entered. There was over 200 entries uh, for the competition. Uh, uh, Andrew L., Ben S and Charles S. So you've won a Steam key for the game. So uh, congratulations for that. Uh, we'll send you an email. We'll be in contact key. shortly. Yeah, give it a, give it a crack. Uh, that's all pretty much we've got time for. Thank you very much for joining us. Lachlan, uh, he's lost his <laughs> we've got final final word from, from Wiggy. Uh, he says, think twice. Maybe he uh, lost his train of thought. Yeah, maybe so, just twice. Maybe just twice. <laughs> it's fine. So... There we go. Lachlan, it's been a pleasure. We're looking forward to jumping back into uh, NovaFlow and giving it another go. Uh, and we will catch everyone listening in and tuning in on the podcast. Peace two out. Two weeks' time. <laughs>